Um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Charles. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here to present our work on deep learning of pom on point cloud. This is a joint work with Hao Su, Kai Chun Mo, and my pro uh, advisor, Professor Liu Gibbs. By the way, Hao Su is going to be a professor in UCSD. Congrats to him. Uh, recently, we observed that many em em emerging applications have been here that require perception of 3D environment or require interaction with 3D objects. To serve those applications, we see a strong need for deep learning technology that is tailored for 3D data. However, different from image that has a dominant representation as 2D pixel arrays, 3D has many different popular representations. Here is the list for just a few of them. Among those 3D representations, this work cares most about point cloud. Point cloud is probably the closest 3D representation to raw sensor data. It's also in a canonical form, meaning that we can easily convert other 3D representations to point cloud, or convert point cloud to others. However, there's barely any work on point cloud feature learning. Most existing point cloud features are handcrafted towards specific tasks. The table here lists a few of them. There have been a few works that process point cloud with deep neural networks. However, nearly all of them convert point cloud to other representations and then use existing neural network architectures. So a research question is, can we achieve effective feature learning directly on point cloud? The answer is yes. In our work, PointNet, we do end-to-end -end learning for scattered and unordered point data. We propose a unified architecture for various 3D tasks, including object classification, parse segmentation, and semantic scene parsing. In object classification, we assign a label to the entire point cloud, while in segmentation, PointNet will output per point classification result. Our design for PointNet architecture is motivated by two challenges. First challenge is how to design a neural network for unordered set input. We use a 2D array to represent a point cloud. Each point is a 2D dimensional vector. In simplest case, a point only like, is an like XYZ coordinate. But it can also include RGB or laser intensity or surface normals, etc. Since point cloud is a set, its elements are orderless. It means that with row permutation, the new array will represent exactly the same set. Therefore, our neural network needs to be invariant to n factorial permutations. Mathematically, a neural network is just a function. In a functional view, a permutation invariant neural network corresponds to a symmetric function. In symmetric function for any ordering of the arguments, the function value is always the same. Many functions are symmetric. For example, max operation is symmetric. So is summation. Then the, quest the question becomes, how can we construct a family of symmetric functions by neural networks? Our construction is inspired by such an observation. Suppose f can be written as the following compositional form. Then f is symmetric as long as if g is symmetric. Guided by this observation, we can construct a neural network based uh, symmetric function. Assuming input point tau is just x, y, z. First, we can transform each point independently and identically by a small network H. Or you can think the network will project raw points into a high dimensional embedding space. Then we aggregate point embeddings by a simple symmetric function G. Lastly, we post transform the aggregated information by another network gamma. Uh, we call this architecture point net vanilla. A network in this structure is guaranteed to be invariant to input order. But one question still remains. Among the space of all symmetric functions, what functions can be constructed by point net? Interestingly, we can show that any symmetric function that is continuous can be arbitrarily approximated by point net. Of course, higher accuracy requires more internal neurons. But anyway, this is still a very good news. We are on the right direction. Empirically, we use multi-layer perception network for function H and gamma, which is just the fully connected layers with ReLU and batch normalizations. Note that function H is shared across all points. We use max pooling as symmetric function G. 
Well, we have also tried like average pooling and weighted average pooling. We found that the max pooling has the best performance in our experiments. Next, based on PointNet vanilla, we will design architectures to make our network more robust to input geometric transformations. The basic idea is to align input point cloud to a canonical space. This alignment is achieved by applying an iFind transformation to input point coordinates. The transformation is predicted by a mini point net, which we call TNet, which is end-to-end -end trained with the rest of the network. This in spirit is similar to spatial transformer network in images. However, what's different is that for point cloud, a geometric transformation is just matrix multiplication. It's very simple and efficient. Compared to image or volume, there's no need for bilinear or trilinear sampling. Similarly, we can use such transformer networks to align points in embedding space. For example, the figure shows a transformation for intermediate embeddings in a 64-dimensional space. To avoid falling into bad local minimums, we add a regularization loss uh, to constrain the transformation matrix to be close to orthogonal. Here we show how transformer networks can be combined to build our final point net architecture for classification. At the very beginning, we have a point cloud with endpoints of XYZ coordinates. The input point is firstly transformed by an input transformer network. Then each point is embedded by a multilayer perception to six four dimensional embedding space. Then a feature transformer is applied. Then each point is again transformed uh, in, a, in another embedding space, which is 1,024 dimensional. Then a max pooling will aggregate all points in the high dimensional embedding space to output a global feature vector. The global vector is then updated to finally output K scores for K candidate categories for classification. So far, we have introduced our point net classification network. To extend this architecture to segmentation, we need to predict class scores for each each point. A simple but effective way to, uh, to do that is to uh, concatenate local embeddings and the global feature vectors. For each point, we concatenate the local embedding with global feature vector and use that for per point classification and finally output M scores for each point to do the segmentation. Now let's look at some results. Uh, for object classification, we evaluate on ModelNet uh, Monad 40 shape classification data set. We sample 1,024 points from surfaces of each shape. We show that PointNet as the first deep learning architecture on point cloud is already achieving better or on par results with several well-engineered 3D CNNs. Here we show some results of object part segmentation from ShapeNet par data set on both partial input and complete input. Quantitatively, PointNet has also surpassed the previous state of the art using traditional features and also a baseline using 3D CNNs on uh, object path segmentation. Our PointNet can also be applied to thin level semantic segmentation. Here, first row is a rendered view of 3D point cloud. The second line is segmentation results in the same viewpoint. The network is able to clearly segment different semantic regions like walls, tables, chairs, ceilings, et cetera. Besides strong performance in 3D recognition, PointNet is also very robust to data corruption. While trained down 1,024 points, at test time, we can randomly drop points and see how classification accuracy suffers. Remarkably, even after dropping 50% of the points, accuracy drops only by 2%. Our network is also very robust to outlier points and point perturbations. Compared with the baseline 3D CN, we see that point net is much more robust than 3D CN in dealing with missing points. Note that both point net and 3D CN haven't seen any incomplete data during training time. So why is point net so robust to missing data? To answer the question, let's firstly visualize what has been learned by the PointNet global feature. For an input point cloud, we want to find out the set of points in the input that contribute to the global feature. Notice that some of the points won't contribute because of, because of the max pooling. We call this subset of contributing points as critical point set. 
If we visualize the critical, po critical points for the four sampled objects shown here, we can see that critical points are capturing object contour and skeletons. Furthermore, we can find out points in space that won't affect the global feature. These points are not limited to the input set. The third row shows the set of points that won't affect the point cloud's global feature. We call this set as upper bound shape. By definition, any point set that falls between critical point set and upper bound set will result in the same global feature vector. This explains why point net is so robust to various data corruption, such as missing data or point perturbations. We also show similar visualization for all of sample categories. Point net is still able to capture basic contour and key structures, meaning that the feature learning generalizes well to unseen categories. In summary, we propose a, a deep, novel deep architecture for point cloud called point net. It provides a unified approach to various 3D recognition tasks. We've also shown rich theoretical and um, uh, experimental results to validate our network design. We think our work is just the beginning for 3D deep learning with Point Cloud. This is going to be very exciting. Our code and data has been released in the website. And welcome to see, see us in the poster session at number nine. That's it for the talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>